Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Edwin Turok. I'm going to present uh, about uh, structure aware fuzzing of uh, ZenStore D. So first of all, what is a ZenStore daemon? So for those of you who are familiar with Zen, you of course know the answer to this. Uh, but just for everyone's sake, uh, it's a key value store uh, where you have uh, access control um, and transaction support to manage uh, basically metadata uh, about the VMs that are running. Uh, and this metadata is also used as part of the protocol for setting up virtual devices like virtual disks and uh, virtual networks. And it's part of the guest virtual device uh, API. So because it's part of an ABI, any modifications that we make to the ZenStore daemon must retain compatibility with existing guests. Uh, the reason for this is quite simple, because you have operating systems of various versions and age running, uh, and it's usually quite difficult to get uh, customers and users to upgrade their VMs, so you need to support whatever they are currently running. But on the same time, you have to uh, fix bugs and uh, improve the security of uh, the ZenStore daemon. Uh, there are currently two flavors uh, of the ZenStore daemon. Uh, you have a C and an OCaml version. In this presentation, I'll focus on the OCaml version, also called OZenStore D. Uh, each of these flavors is used in production in uh, large deployments by different organizations. Uh, so in uh, my case, uh, the OZenStore D would be used by Citrix hypervisor. Uh, so the question is, what is the specification of uh, Zanstor Demon, right? Because there, we have lots of guests that are using it. Uh, surely there is a specification. So there is a document in the Zan tree that documents the existing behavior. Uh, it's not necessarily a formal specification, although it tries to uh, describe the uh, behavior in as much detail as uh, feasible, there are, of course, certain ambiguities left in the specification, and there are slight differences in semantics sometimes between the C and the OCaml versions. Although these differences are not uh, intentional, the aim, I think, is on uh, for everyone to have the same uh, behavior, regardless of which uh, implementation uh, you are running. But, of course, because this document is not a formal specification, you can't actually test whether implementation confirms that specification. Or similarly, you can't actually test whether a guest's use of this answer uh, confirms to this uh, specification. So we can consider this specification at this time as a way to describe existing behavior uh, and a way to uh, document uh, existing behavior. Uh, so this got a little bit uh, problematic when uh, I tried to implement a new feature to do live updates for Zenstore D, because, of course, a lot of details on how you implement live update depends on very subtle semantics uh, that may actually be different between uh, implementations and not fully documented or not uh, fully known. Uh, on the other hand, I would like to keep existing guests running correctly, so I would need to know uh, what that behavior is. Uh, so all of this got started when I was trying to come up with a way of testing live updates. Uh, and because this live update mechanism got introduced as part of a security update, that has made uh, testing uh, even more complicated than usual uh, because we couldn't release uh, the live update functionality before releasing the actual uh, security fixes. Um, so this limited the amount of users that could test it. So basically, it was only limited to uh, developers uh, initially. Why did I need to develop a uh, live update? Well, I was trying to help uh, fix one particular um, issue in sensor security issue, um, which was actually documented in the uh, in the specification. Um, and while we are doing that, we realized that we don't have an easy way to deploy this security fix. 
currency is the only way for you to take a security fix in Zenstore was that you had to reboot your host, uh, which is not great if you're uh, trying to have long uptime. You can, of course, migrate VMs away and migrate VMs back. Um, but still, it's an uh, inconvenience. And Zen itself already supports live patching, so it would be great if other components of Zen also supported uh, live patches. This quickly turned into a rabbit hole, though, because as while I was working on XSA 115 and restart ability, I kept finding uh, more and more bugs. So uh, I figured I need an automated way of testing and an automated way of finding uh, these bugs. Um, so I think this brings us to the question of what tests uh, exist for Zenstore. There is actually a small unit test inside the Zenstore tree, and there are a few unit tests in the Mirage repo for uh, Zenstore, but they're not quite what you would call a conformance suit uh, for a specification. And we, of course, have a lot of other tests, but they're usually very high level and test the whole system with uh, VMs running on it and exercise the behavior from a user's point of view. Uh, but in that case, Failures can be a bit tricky to triage and to figure out where uh, the behavior actually went wrong, uh, especially when it comes to transaction semantics, so very subtle semantics and race conditions um, or the absence of race conditions. If you're trying to prove the absence of race conditions. So before the startability, um, having such a test suite wouldn't be useful, um, but we consider the whole system testing adequate uh, for that purpose at the time. But if you want to do live updates, I wanted to have uh, lower level tests of correct behavior than just system tests. Of course, system tests are still useful because they exercise the whole stack uh, and find bugs in places you uh, haven't expected. And also previous to restartability, there was usually very little development being done on test, or usually it was just to keep it uh, up to date with uh, small bug fixes and uh, security fixes. So of course, now writing full unit tests as part of implementing a security fix would be quite a large undertaking. Um, and one compromise between writing small and maintainable code and having a useful unit test is to use fuzzing, right? But not just random fuzzing, uh, but uh, a guided fuzzing, uh, because I want to mostly fuzz uh, the correct behavior in this case. The intention is not to find uh, packets that cause errors in Zenstore, because most of those packets would get rejected very early on. Um, and at least OZenstore is written in a memory-safe language. So uh, in that case, uh, exploits of this kind about invalid packets are less problematic. Um, but I'm very interested in functional uh, tests and functional fuzzing. Uh, so the question is, what do you provide to a fuzzer? Uh, usually the fuzzer looks for crashes, right? So, or, or, or bad behavior. So how would you fuzz uh, functional uh, scenarios? So the classic fuzzing is uh, well known. Uh, there are tools like American Fuzzy Log that are widely used. They generate data. Uh, you can uh, run it in parallel. The main question is, does the application crash? Does the application exit in a, in a bad way? Um, but this is less relevant, less relevant for uh, Zenstore testing. And we got testing property testing. Uh, some of you may be aware of, um, about QuickCheck, a uh, Haskell framework for uh, testing uh, properties, which has inspired similar mechanisms in other languages, including in OCaml and Python and C. Uh, you basically have some Boolean properties that describe the behavior that you want at a very high level, and then you generate random inputs and you check whether you, those uh, properties still hold. And this sounds very attractive for the kind of testing I wanted to do in Zenstore because I basically had a very high level property. I wanted to know whether a live update was behaving correctly. And if live update behaves correctly, uh, the property would be that the guest cannot observe that live update has happened, or it cannot observe 
a difference in semantics. The semantics after live update should be the same as uh, before uh, live update. Now, classic property testing is typically single-threaded and it's quite slow to find bugs uh, beyond uh, a certain limit. It's very good for interactive development and quickly finding uh, some low-hanging fruit. Uh, but if you want to find uh, lots of bugs and well, use as many computer resources as you have available to find those bugs, uh, that is a bit more uh, difficult uh, to use. Luckily, we can combine these two approaches. Um, and there are actually frameworks available that combine these two approaches. Um, I've seen this referred to as structured way of fuzzing, because basically you take a random number generator, uh, for example, from AFL, but instead of feeding it directly into your program as packets, you use that random number to generate uh, packets and build up a structure that is actually valid. So, for example, instead of generating random bytes for a packet, you are generating random strings that make up an operation, and the operation itself is random. I will show um, an example code a bit later on that would hopefully make this uh, clearer. Uh, but basically, you would generate uh, valid inputs in, in most of these cases, and you can also add constraints, like I want to generate a string between one and a thousand bytes, so then most you don't get uh, too large packet errors most of the time from uh, from your uh, fuzzer. And the advantage of doing it this way is that you can use existing tools like AFL to run your uh, to fuzz your code, um, and you get the benefit of the parallelization and all the tooling around uh, AFL that already exists. And it really speeds up uh, finding bugs. Uh, sometimes it finds bugs in a few minutes or. If I let it run for half an hour, then it typically finds um, uh, an interesting uh, bug. Not necessarily a security bug, uh, but an interesting uh, semantic bug. There are various implementations in OCaml. Uh, there is one called QCSTM, which stands for Quick Check State Machine. There is uh, one um, based on Crowbar, which had to be modified a bit so I can drive it from AFL. And there is also one called Monolith, which is a more recent development, uh, which actually started when uh, I already had some code written for Odense OT, but uh, I can't use Crowbar, but uh, in theory it could work with any of these frameworks. Uh, I also tried the QCSDM, and there are some interesting ideas there. So what, what's, uh, why does it say, do I talk about state machines? So we have a simple concept. Uh, we got two Zen stores, and we want to check that the behavior is identical. Not that they produce the exact same result, but that the behavior is equivalent. Uh, for example, if you start a transaction, you may not get the same transaction ID on both of them, but the actual uh, results you get when you put entries in a tree and you query the tree, they produce equivalent uh, behaviors. So one of these Zen stores runs doesn't support live update, and the second Zen store, the Zen store under test is the one that supports live update. So then when the live update command comes, uh, you would get different behavior if you have a bug. Uh, so the state machine uh, is the usual kind of state machine where you got an input being generated by a file, in this case, a packet that could be a packet that comes from a guest. In this case, it's all simulated. You don't need any guests running. And uh, the reference implementation is currently just another version of Sensor itself. In my uh, framework, both of these run in the same process and run in some kind of mock Zenstore, so they don't actually need to run on a Zen system. You can run these on your own uh, box as you are doing development, which is very useful for getting quick feedback on any kind of bug fixes or changes uh, that you make. You don't need to copy to a machine and reboot the machine or uh, deal with uh, restarting the answer or any of that. You can do all of this development on, on the same box. Uh, I'll show an example later on on how these command packets are built up from primitives like random strings, random integers, um, random choice. There are other possibilities in the future as well. I already said we got two implementations and we aim for their semantics to be identical. So we could actually check that their semantics are identical. 
run a C version and then a camel version of Zenstore side by side and check that their behavior is identical. Of course, this requires both of them to support the same features. Uh, this doesn't exist yet, but it's a possibility for a future direction. Another possibility is to use um, this fuzzer as sort of an executable specification of Zenstore or evolve it into an executable specification of uh, Zenstore. Currently, I only have one high-level property, which is live update equivalent. Uh, but we could also document transaction semantics and what happens when you get conflicts during transactions. So there are lots of possibilities to evolve this with more uh, complicated uh, properties that one would want to hold, or even just very basic static tests, like I wrote something into the tree, I later read it back, it is still there and does it have the same value, and can I make sure that no one else has access to it if I set my uh, ACS uh, correctly. Um, now, of course, when the bug is found, usually if you have a lot of these random test cases, it would be quite difficult to actually look at uh, because you would have random strings that wouldn't really make much sense, and you could also have a very long list of packets that you need to run until you actually hit the bug. Uh, but the very good property of this is that once you've found the bug, then you can use tools like AFL, CMIN, or if you use QuickCheck, there is a shrinker, uh, that can actually produce a very small test case, usually like three or four packets that reproduce your problem, and also it minimizes the strings and uh, integers and everything inside that test case recursively until the bug is still uh, reproduced. So you actually get the very minimal reproduction. And usually just by looking at the test case, you realize, ah, okay, I know what the bug is. Uh, I'll, I'll show an example later on about the bug with MKD and quotas, where um, the trace really shows just MKD live update, a bit of setup around that. And it's very obvious what the bug is. And then of course, it's very easy to fix it. And then you can run the test again, check, it doesn't break, and then run the fuzzer again to see now, is your fix actually exposed bugs uh, elsewhere. Uh, another issue with running fuzzers is that they are not deterministic, right? Because they are, they are random. Uh, you can run them in a deterministic way if you start from a fixed seed. Like, for example, that's a very useful way. Uh, I use it in unit tests. Uh, I want them to be reproducible, so I use a fixed seed. But you can use this fixed seed method to also replay uh, a given failure. So the fuzzer prints its state at the time uh, a failure happens, and then you can just replay uh, that, that particular input, uh, which is basically just a file containing the exact input, uh, and you immediately reproduce uh, the bug, which is very useful for debugging, because then you can sort of go back in time as well and change things and see how it would behave and um, it's very useful for uh, testing and uh, developing a fix. Uh, this is not just for specific to OSINT store, it's actually a feature of how AFL works, because if you get an actual file, that's your input that reproduces uh, the bug. Uh, the extra benefit that this uh, framework with uh, Crowbar adds is that it prints a small base 64 encoded input so that even if you run this from a CI, you can then copy paste that basic for input and reproduce the bug locally on your machine. If it was a binary, it would be a bit more difficult to get it out of the CI and back to you. So that is small uh, quality of development improvements in these frameworks. So what would be the next steps from uh, from here? It is, I think, just the beginning of doing a security audit of Zen Store, and the more I look at it, and the more others look at it, the more issues we discover. Uh, some of these issues are, are known, uh, and some of these issues are actually quite difficult to fix uh, due to the requirement of keeping uh, backward compatibility. And although the fuzzer was only capable of finding semantic bugs so far, uh, they are, some of them are security bugs too. Uh, the quota is actually different after live update is one of the bugs uh, that was found when I replay the tree uh, after a live update and as opposed to building it up step by step by adding and deleting nodes, I ended up with different quota. Now in this case, the quota was actually uh, larger than, it, it taken up more quota than it was supposed to, so it was not a security bug. 
uh, if it was the other way around, it would have been a security bug because then you could uh, bypass quotas uh, using these kinds of bugs. Uh, there are also sometimes security bugs being discovered when I'm looking at the output of the fuzzer just because I read the surrounding code and I realize that there's something missing there, like it was the case uh, with the permission checks on the root node. The root node was special case in OSEN store, and thought that it was actually quite obvious um, when you looked at it that uh, there was no security check done on the root node. And it was actually quite obvious that on the else branch of if there was a security check done, um, so I wouldn't credit the father necessarily for finding the bug, but the father, the father guided me to the problematic page I was actually fixing a different bug when uh, I found this. And I think that's uh, kind of also the rabbit hole that I hinted on at the beginning um, of the presentation, that as soon as I start to fix one security bug and then I try to stress sensor a lot to prove to myself that I fixed that bug. I run into quite a lot of other bugs. Uh, that's how I run into Zenops, the security bug, where I actually created lots and lots of uh, three nodes, and uh, I realized that uh, there were some uh, issues with uh, Zenops in that case that uh, it, it didn't really um, handle uh, such a high, na high uh, number of uh, sensor tree changes at the same time. Uh, so all of those are, are fixed. And uh, yeah, as Andy said, it, we had quite a large number of XSAs. And I think if we would have kept going, we would have found more. But I think at some point we just decided that it's time to release bug fixes for the XSAs that we already have or we would never be done. And then, uh, of course, if you find more bugs, then there are going to be more uh, security fixes. But now that we have live update. Hopefully, it would be easier to deploy those security fixes because you don't need to reboot your host. You just need to use live update to go straight into the uh, new version of uh, of ZenOS D. I don't think in the future it might be possible to use this fuzzer also to deliberately find uh, security bugs, but I think it's done a pretty good job even when it's not targeted to finding security bugs in finding security bugs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see when when we run out of security bugs. We'll see if you can improve the the faster in uh, in in uh, that way. Uh, we could of course also like to use this to track check uh, transaction semantics, uh, which is actually quite a complicated topic. Uh, there's actually also, also a paper written about the way Zenstore solves this particular problem and tries to avoid transactions. And there has been several changes. Uh, since uh, that paper was written uh, to improve uh, speed and reduce the amount of conflicts you have. So currently, again, the specification doesn't actually uh, document how uh, transactions can conflict. Of course, up to the implementation to avoid uh, conflicts uh, as best as it can. But from a testing perspective, I would like to know when these conflicts can happen. Of course, every transaction could conflict, but that's not a very useful property. You still want your transactions to complete eventually. At least one of them should always complete. Uh, and then if you've got multiple guests running, you want to have as few conflicts, a few unnecessary conflicts as possible. And of course, the reference implementation in this case was always the same, Zenstor, in fact, the same binary. Um, but I was experimenting with actually writing a smaller one, maybe starting from uh, scratch or starting from the Mirage code base. In, in writing a, a Zenstore implementation that is focused on uh, ease of maintainability and ease of reasoning, or well, to make it as small as possible and still as correct as possible, and that could be the specification itself. Uh, and that reference implementation wouldn't be concerned about performance aspects or uh, uh, denial of service aspects, or uh, but it should still implement everything correctly from a security aspect. Um, yeah, that's a very good question on fuzzing a season store against OSEN store. I mentioned that as one of uh, the future directions that we could uh, fuzz one implementation against the other. Currently, it's not possible because uh, the driver for the fuzzer feeds inside OSEN stored directly, uh, but it could be uh, adapted, I think, in the future that the packet it generates could actually be sent 
uh, to running Zen store that's different from itself, and, and that one could be a, a C version of uh, of Zen store. And of course, you could also do it the other way around. But uh, yeah, it would be an interesting way to find semantic bugs or maybe more uh, security bugs. Uh, and yeah, of course, the and idea would be that, as I mentioned, uh, I would have an executable specification that's also readable, but that acts as a fuzzer. Um, about the version of Sensor, I only have experience with the OCaml version of Sensor, so of course it depends who you ask. I think I'm biased to, to say which one to use. Um, so obviously I'm going to say is the OSensor one, because that's the one that we support in Citrix hypervisor. Um, but they each have their own uh, benefits. So I think uh, you would have to do your own testing and uh, see which one has the features that you require. Uh, of course, I could mention a few features of OZEN Store uh, that I I would choose it, and the developers of CZEN Store could probably mention a few of their own. I think one thing that would be beneficial for choosing OZEN Store would be because it's written in a memory-safe language, and then you have less, you don't have bugs like use after free or uh, crashes due to uh, processing invalid data, uh, which avoids some of the vulnerabilities. And so I think we're actually uh, already talking about this slide on what, what are the benefits of uh, to the uh, Zenstore community. Um, all this work that I described here is available on uh, on Zendivel. Once we do a bit more testing, it's going to be uh, committed to the Zenstor tree as well. Um, and of course, there are benefits that we are uh, we are developing Zenstor again. Um, and yes, there is uh, there currently isn't a way to run Zenstor as a stop domain. There was a project in uh, in the Mirage repos to run Zenstore uh, as a subdomain uh, that's not really maintained currently. Um, but yeah, potentially the subdomain could also have two variants. It currently only has one uh, one variant. Yeah, so of course it's difficult to choose between them uh, because uh, essentially you can use this to plug arbitrary devices, right? Or uh, it controls how devices are plugged and how devices are accessed. So in, in that sense, it's uh, yeah. I think to be fair, you would have to do your own test and see with the load that you typically have, which of these two implementations is uh, better suited for uh, for your use case. I think I'm going to attempt to do some uh, screen sharing and show you some examples, and then we can come back to... Uh, I think we only have like two minutes left, so maybe <clears throat> maybe we don't actually have time to do the demo. Uh, so I'll just, uh, just put a link here to the, um, and do a very quick rundown on, uh, how this actually looks like. And yeah, some of the security fixes have been around limiting uh, memory usage. Um, I think the actually the OM killer should be adjusted a bit so it prefers Zenstore last, uh, but sometimes it does tend to. Um, but of course, if you have a memory leak, 
that that's not going to help you because eventually you will uh, run out of uh, memory. I think we're nearly out of time though. So um, if we have any more questions, then uh, we should uh, discuss it on the chat. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, have the uh, presentation.